Can we start with table one? Table one? Table one, who's our reporter? Come on up, table one. And we do need you to come up because we are recording the meeting and the only way to get the recording is through the microphone. Hi there. Um, table one. Okay. So we did, we, this, these are just sort of non sequiturial ideas that hopefully are helpful to those involved in the design. Um, we talked a lot about accessibility um, and, oh, we talked a lot about accessibility and we talked about the different types of gates and the concern that the roller gates, um, you know, can sometimes have things on the ground that are, would make accessibility difficult and to be aware of that where the panel and swing we were assured would not have that problem. Um, we all really felt that we spend a lot of time, and this is something that I've certainly found in the past in coming to all these meetings, that we really need to have three-dimensional models available to us. We spend a great deal of time in these meetings, at least at the tables I've been in, trying to figure out where we are and what we're looking at. I think I would really encourage the authority to bring forth the models from your various designers so we really can dive in here a little bit more successfully. Um, that came up quite a bit. Um, the, um, back to the plans, um, there was a lot of concern about the scope th of the project and the disruption this would cause, and it's a four-year construction phase, so the concern is that it should be made crystal clear at the outset as to how these reaches are going to be uh, coordinated, one with the other and within each one, and what's going to remain open and what's going to remain closed, and that should be very much and conscientiously considered during the course of the design. Um, some of uh, you know the pros we saw were um, the interest in adding a lot more shade and greenery it looked like the less concrete at least in our table the better um, there was an interest in and an acceptance of and an uh, encouraged by the use of some of the benching show, some of the walls rather as benches you know in other words having these walls become something more than the singular wall that you see and we're told that, of course, you're early in design, but that would seem like a fantastic opportunity. No one wants to see flood walls anywhere in any place in New York. It's a tough thing to have to accept. So uh, this is the opportunity for the designers to really go forth unafraid in designing these things so they really work for the communities and the city to really be something that's additive rather than simply just a negative. Um, so we saw a little bit of that in some of the plans, which was encouraging. Um, people would definitely want the volleyball court to remain. Um, the, what else do we have here? I think um, people were very encouraged with the idea of water features, some not, but some yes. Um, uh, there was a call for more movable furniture and less of the concrete static look that it has now. And uh, the, the sort of pros, I'll end on a, on a high note here, is the more access that seems to be indicated in the plans, more trees and greenways, and um, I think that, that's about it. That's all 12 points. Did I, cover, did I miss anything from table one? Speak up. No, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Alice. So let's have table two. I think table two reached uh, some similar conclusions. Uh, okay, I think table two reached uh, some similar conclusions to table one. Uh, first thing, uh, and this is in no particular order, uh, we're interested in, in making the flood wall uh, appear more natural and less concrete. Uh, we'd like to see more plants and greenery, uh, possibly uh, more use of natural flood absorption, uh, absorption uh, uh, I guess, techniques. Um, and more shade. Um, point two is, uh, is we would like to make it more children friendly. Uh, the current design seems uh, very functional, a lot of concrete, looks very uniform, and it seems kind of cold uh, emotionally. Uh, third point is uh, try to find, because this is going to be a mixed use area between pedestrians and cyclists, try to find designs that will slow the bike traffic down a little bit uh, without impact to people who, who have who, um, with disabilities uh, on wheelchairs, et cetera. Uh, we have some questions about maintenance. Um, if we choose concrete over greenery, which one is easier to maintain 
um, o over the long run. And we were concerned about the, um, if, if, uh, if concrete is being used for the walls, we were concerned about things like graffiti and skateboarders. And finally, I think our table uh, would like to prioritize uh, open, unobstructed views and public spaces uh, versus um, a private, um, private spaces. And that's it. Thank you, table two. So table three. Will sound familiar based on the last uh, uh, two uh, reports. Um, we were concerned also about how a flood wall can have a tendency to wall off the park from the rest of the community. Um, and um, to some extent, it's inherent in the need to block uh, the floods and so forth. But we think there are things that may be able to be done, including the kinds of things that uh, Alice referred to, um, to uh, minimize the, the aesthetic and psychological impacts of, uh, of these walls. And in particular, uh, we took a look at the ramp to Liberty Street, where, where it ends is almost at the, defi the, the design flood elevation at South End Avenue. You would only need a flood wall of a foot or two there to, uh, to reach the elevation that you would want to be uh, maybe three feet. And so we suggested perhaps extending the flood protection up that ramp and then having a berm or a buried flood wall of a couple of feet high um, uh, protecting uh, th that area of, of the project, which would also eliminate the need for a deployable there. Um, we liked the, um, although we liked the existing hardscape of the waterfront plaza, the, 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 the decorative steps, the, the, the fountain, the playfulness of it. Many of us noted that our own kids and, we, and other kids that we've watched have played there. I know my dog plays there. And although we're not wedded to preserving that, we understand the reasons for uh, design changes and certainly the accessibility issues, we want to preserve that kind of playfulness um, uh, uh, and uh, I don't know, the, the aesthetic impact similar to what we have there now. We also th thought perhaps adding a water feature, a children's kind of water feature, where water spurts, spurts up out of the ground, uh, maybe in that area would be a, a, a good addition there. Um, <clears throat> we thought access and circulation r really needs to be paramount in terms of uh, considering all of these options. And in particular, we were concerned that the southeast corner of the marina area, which is already a pinch point and where the design is proposing to pinch it even further because of the need to offset, or at least the desire to offset the flood wall from the pump house park, and that we need to um, uh, look closely at that to make sure that we're not um, uh, negatively impacting uh, important circulation issues. Um, we thought that uh, uh, all of these elements and this, this also impacts the, 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 the gates in the flood wall that we need to keep in mind kind of the um, inherent or implicit wayfinding uh, that can be contributed to or detracted from uh, by the use of these flood walls and how they um, uh, merge into the rest of the uh, rest of the scape as well as just the general landscaping uh, uh, period should keep in mind the wayfinding issues uh, and orientation issues. And I think that's it. Okay, table four. Table four asked to have a drawing held up and I'm going to do that. We can't, I'm gonna hold up the, the drawing for you and you can point to what you want to, okay? Thank you. All right, um, in no particular order, um, we talked about that we needed some more details on the DFE. I think this is the first time that we've heard about 16.5. We've heard ranges throughout these workshops. Um, we do need a little bit more clarity to get more concrete recommendations and to move forward. Um, you know, we're
eight months, nine months, 10 months into this process. So wondering when that we're gonna have actual concrete figures um, to go off of. Um, we also asked questions about the adaptable design. Um, what will the foundation be built off of? If in fact we actually have to build to a higher DFE, what, how, how much higher can it go? What are you designing the foundations for? So we talked about that. Um, like table one and two, there were some quotes at our table. We cannot have too many trees. Um, resonated, the less concrete, the better. Um, more planted areas, flood wall should be more natural. Um, again, trees, canopy. Um, we talked a lot about how Brookfield, and when you, you go through that concrete area, um, it's one of the hottest areas during out of the three out of probably six months that people sit out there, it's pr too hot even to sit out there and eat lunch. So people kind of hover in the covered areas near Pump Park. We talked about could we create a par more parks in that area um, that people will want to sit in and have the natural tree canopy. Um, I think Belvedere Park we talked about could you turn that into a park, keep those trees and turn it into a grassy area. It would change a lot of the usage. Um, and again, just the theme of more nature, more trees, more plants, more canopy, um, and make it cooler. Um, water features, also, we wanted to make sure that water features were, um, were um, included. Prioritize play areas for kids. We talked about the playground, ensuring that that playground stays, maybe expanded slightly, but just think about that water feature is really important for the kids. It cools the area. And then the water features where people sit is also important. You know, as climate change happens, it's not just you know flooding that happens from the water, but also the heat index. That is one of the most critical things that we need to address in this project is talking about heat index and, um, and the impact on, um, on people. Um, so we talked about misters, generally making it cooler, um, and um, um, the other piece that we looked at, and I think it's kind of related, is in terms of events. Designing the areas, the event should be a secondary use. Designing this area is not to be just used for commercial, for renting out for events. Um, you know, we see a lot of you know auto shows, you know, going on or or different concerts. But um, you know, there was even a quote at our table that events are an intrusion on the daily lives of residents, and we should think about using the space for the prioritizing the residents' needs above the commercial needs. Thank you. You can tell who has really also agreed with that at our table. Um, on that, we talked about, you know, could you do a floating stage? At one point, there was images of floating stages that could be moved away back and forth. And so you could, it's, it's a little bit more flexible uh, for the event space. Um, sorry, next page. Um, we weren't sure exactly which part of this project that Brookfield owns the lands on, but any part that Brookfield owns, they should alone pay for, not the residents. So that should be a, a big consideration. Um, they should pay 100% of that bill and pay for the maintenance for the deployables um, in the instance of a flood. Um, and um, yeah. That, that we need to look critically at what the benefit is for Brookfield themselves as a corporation. Um, reiterating, keep the volleyball court. People love the volleyball court. Um, potentially, one idea was to turn into a community ice skating rink during the winter. Um, again, the idea of the current one is a for-profit entity. It's very expensive. The Seaport has a free one. Could we do something similar, repurpose the volleyball court um, you know, for the, for, for the community. And the last piece um, was we want to see iterations and options to move the ferry terminal south. So residents want the ferry terminal closer to Brookfield. Employees, I will tell you, as an employee that works at Brookfield, um, you know, a lot of people, it would be more convenient for them to catch their ferry um, earlier if it was um, further south. So we would like to see in the next um, iteration the, the ferry terminal move south. Anything I missed? Awesome. Thank you, table four. Let's hear from table five. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, 
I'd like to start by just giving a thank you to the design team. I know this isn't a easy or comfortable process. And I think overall, our table felt that uh, they've done a good job in bringing forth and hearing and just a kind of acknowledgement to the efforts and uh, thoughts that have been put forth so far. Um, that being said, we did have a few comments. <laughs> Um, we do think that there's been a good balance in REACH 5 between the needs of the flood mitigation um, but still maintaining the overall look and feel of REACH 5. Um, we, contrary to a couple other points that have been made, we did feel strongly that the waterfront plaza should remain as a grand plaza, as a, you know, preserve that community space, that event space, um, that, you know, along the overall Battery Park Esplanade, there is a lot of areas for trees and um, shade, but we do have this remarkable space, that, what we felt was a remarkable space, that should be preserved for community and event space, including the volleyball courts. Um, we re reiterated the pinch point along the southeast corner. We felt that particularly when there are events that are using uh, a part of that corridor to set up there green room or their movie screen, that's already a very tough area. Uh, we felt that uh, additional consideration or review should be looking at the roller gates and maybe something as a fold-up gate that could collapse into the gr at grade level and then as needed be fold up rather than um, these gates that are not quite as uh, aesthetic. and. Uh, Recognizing that uh, there is a, quite a bit of bicycle traffic, particularly when there's events, that maybe there could be some consideration to incorporating some bicycle parking um, and maybe encourage the bicycle parking rather than people just riding through. So thank you. Okay, thank you. We have table six. Hi, everyone. Um, I think we have a lot of very similar points across some of the tables. Uh, we really like the increased ADA accessibility, stroller accessibility. Uh, the wall being as seamless as possible is also a big plus. Um, the choke point in front of Pump, Pump House Park is definitely a, a big concern. Uh, especially when we look at the actual numbers, it, it seems to go from like 30 something feet to less than half that. Um, so that, yeah, that, that's definitely a big concern. I'm not sure there's any good alternative, but creative thinking there would be great. Uh, things that are priorities that we should make sure that are kept. Um, the, the art in general in the area, the, the stances of poetry along the, the fence and along the water, uh, the Whitman poem there, there's some additional poetry in the pavement on the um, I forget what the area is called, the, uh, kinda on, the, on the northern end. Uh, there's some art installations there as well that people care about. Uh, the police memorial that was just very recently renovated, make sure that's um, protected or at least taken into account, um, both in terms of it not being destroyed, but also in, if possible, protected from flooding itself so that it, you know, the project doesn't kill it, but then a, flooding, a flood does. Um, there's also uh, stone benches that are along the esplanade that are kind of good to, to, to sit along, especially in the plaza, that are not in the current plan diagrams. So I'm not sure if that's an omission or intentional, but uh, keeping those are, are also a priority. Um, and then thing, in, in terms of things to consider, uh, also uh, brought up earlier, temperature management, especially in the event plaza area, just get pretty unbearably hot, so um, I like the idea of water features there because then kids can splash around and then the water would naturally cool off the area. Um, the, the engineers also mentioned low albedo material, so something more reflective that doesn't retain as much of the heat as the, the current concrete does. Um, adding planters along the top of the wall, it's kind of a nice, you know, visual, aesthetically pleasing um, addition could be good. And then uh, actually a good point from uh, somebody at the table was in a lot of the, um, the redesigned staircases and, and the edges, 
kind of look like a skateboarder's paradise. So uh, adding some obstacles or, or some, uh, yeah, I've seen those on like benches across the city, just something to, to make it just not really so easy to just kind of grind a rail on it and basically generally be disruptive. Um, it's pretty much it from our table. Thanks. Thank you. And table seven. It's our final report for the night. Well, thank you very much. Every table has a little bit of the same and a little bit different. So let me begin. So there is a lot of questions about the exact size of the wall and the height needed. So hopefully the 30 percent mark will be able to understand better on what the height of these walls are going to be. Also, keeping um, the, the look and feel of Battery Park City with the pavers, but making sure that those are water absorbable pavers, like we're being tested right now at the end of South End Avenue. I keep all the major artwork. And on Belvedere Plaza, the elevation is all high. And in this exercise, most of our areas are already high. So we shouldn't have a very high wall to go along with this. We would like to have emergency egress for the 300 Vesey building and not a wall in that main entrance. Possibly smaller tree beds in Belvedere Plaza to add a few more trees move to traditional benches that we have already in existence in Battery Park City to add more public space and seating. Mm -hmm. Maintain the Belvedere Plaza entertainment platform and move the ferry terminal south to ease traffic. On the waterfront plaza, uh, limit the number of switchbacks um, that consume a lot of um, square footage that we could have more, um, maybe a one-way ramp or a, a, a ramp that has um, exits <laughs> rather than so many switchbacks. More shading if possible, but as long as it's not blocking views, keeping the current waterfront feature with Movable cha chairs and tables with umbrellas along the waterfront helps ease some of the traffic and the speeding uh, bikes. Expand the seating just a bit by keeping the wall at a um, manageable level so you can see over it next to the, s the trees that we ha have in existence near, near the fountain. Keep both of the fountains in place. Um, use deployables in front of the winter garden. And on the pump house, um, not moving the wall towards the pathway, keeping it in its existing position. And that's it. In the pump house area, uh, primarily is using those uh, absorbable pavers to collect the water because it gets a little wet in that area. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Um, before we say goodnight, I just want to remind the um, note takers, please take photographs of your renderings with all of the post-its on it. Be sure your post-its are marked by your table number and the topic, right? And I think Battery Park City Authorities, Gwen Dawson, would like to say goodnight. I want to thank you all on behalf of the authority. I'm Gwen Dawson, the Senior Vice President for Real Property at the authority. And um, this is the final of the four REACH specific um, workshops that we had scheduled for the project, but we're not done yet. So there will be plenty of opportunities for you to continue to provide feedback and learn more about the project as uh, the design progresses. Uh, there will be another uh, project meeting in the spring. Uh, in the meantime, you are certainly welcome to go on the website and to provide direct feedback to the authority uh, um, and ask questions along the way. So thank you again for this tremendous uh, participation in these workshops and have a nice evening. <laughs>